The Mandalorian season three has been split among fans or online fans anyway. Some fans love it. Some fans hate it. You can't please them all half the time. You can't please anyone. But we got one episode left to go. The seventh episode just aired and it was entitled Spies. And there's been a lot of speculation as to who these spies in this episode were. Obviously, we have Kane, who is an Imperial spy that is now part of the New Republic. She sees a probe droid, which was awesome to see, and kind of gives uh, Moff Gideon the lowdown, the rundown on what's going on on Navarro with the Mandalorians and how the two tribes are uniting. Now, a lot of people are speculating that the armorer is a spy herself, as she as when they're on Mandalore right before the whole invasion happens. She is she cannot get off that planet fast enough back to the ships. In that moment, however, when she's walking to the ship, I didn't get the sense of a traitor necessarily or a spy. I got the sense of a pig walking into the slaughter, somebody who was going into a trap, uh, a la Admiral Akbar. Uh, that's the vibe that I got. Now, Axe Wolves was not around either. So there's speculation that probably possibly Axe Wolves is a spy, and I do believe he might be. There is a reason why Axe Wolves was not in the finale at the end of season two, and it wasn't because he was a dude. People are trying to figure out why for two years now Axe Wolves was forgotten at the end of that season. Everyone said, no, there's a reason, there's a reason. You're going to find out there's a reason. Fantastic. Let's find out what that reason is. Are we going to find out now? One episode to go. Episode 8. Is it going to be 20 minutes long? Is it going to be 50 minutes long? We don't know. I'm hoping it's the latter and we get a big chunk of Mandalorian coming up in this episode. But I want to point out who I don't know if I necessarily buy into this or not, but I want to talk about this suggestion that I don't hear a lot of people discussing as of right now, but Bo-Katan. Could Bo-Katan Kreese be the spy the other spy now a lot of people would argue no she's been at grogu she's friends she's been she's been like our hero this season basically he's putting din Djarin to the side yes putting din Djarin to the side the armor is our red herring when bo katan has been right there in front of us hiding in plain sight the spy the turncoat has been hiding in plain sight she had possession of the dark saber before Moff Gideon. Nobody saw the encounter between her and Moff Gideon. How Moff Gideon got that dark saber from Bo Katan, right? This episode, she finally let us know how that exchange went down. She gave it to him to leave Mandalore so her people would be safe, and he turned on her. Seems like a nice sob story to say when you've got something to hide and you want the sympathy of the people around you doesn't sound like someone i necessarily trust the other instance that i could bring up is that when they're all locked in that little hallway cell thing the two doors they can't get out they can't get out moff gideon gives her the choice he says give me the dark saber and let them go and instead she decides to break out and free everyone is she freeing them all or is she leading them into another trap that has come up in my mind as well as like well okay they got out of there but we know that there's going to be these beskar troopers here and the ships are all being taken over as well there's a lot going on so could it possibly be bo katan across a turncoat the other thing i want to bring out was brandon wayne he had this quote about a month ago maybe not even maybe a few weeks ago and uh, he said this on the Star Wars Session podcast. Shout out to Star Wars Sessions. Here we go. There's a scene coming up with Bo and Mando. And it is, I don't know which version they chose as far as what was going back and forth between us. But I think it's going to, I had a great time doing that. And it was a lot of varying emotions came here and there. And this, there's just a really cool quality that I felt that I was able to play around in as an actor, which was most of the time you're not aware of it. You're in the moment and you go, but there's something about that. The do si do that we did while physical and verbal was super intense. I think it's going to be really cool. I think you're going to enjoy it. Now the enjoying part doesn't really let on that. This is a spy on the other side, but I mean, if it's a fun fight, it's a fun fight. Also, I got to bring up like Axe Wolves. I think Axe Wolf might be in on it with Bo Katan. And when they had that exchange and you know, they had the fake fight and whatever, and she got the Darksaber back, or she, she led them and then didn't give them the Darksaber, which probably was all part of the, the ploy to begin with. Right, Gannon, good with Din. 
and all that. Because she was very quick to, this is the way, put on the helmet. There's always been something off with Bo-Katan this season. The armor, yeah, 100%. There's something off with the armor as well. But there's something off with Bo-Katan. And you kind of feel like if there's going to be a red herring, it's going to be the armor. They haven't been playing, they haven't shown us their cards. The Mandalorian, the, like the Disney Plus shows pretty much as a whole, the Filoni Favreau stuff mostly, they haven't really like given you everything. They've kind of shown you like one card and then be like, we're not, that's not the deck. Like you're, we're playing with, we're playing with like Italian cards and you're playing with this. Like, it's, it's different. It's, it's, you know, all chips are in and, and they're taking us away from us. It's like me, I'm the cooler one. <laughs> When I go to the casino, that's how I feel right now. We've all we've been played every time, and is the armor too obvious a choice, or is she so obvious that she is the choice? I don't know. But Bo Katan, I don't trust you. We're coming for you. There's evidence to show that you might not be the one. She was easily in there. She she saved Vizsla's son. Rip. Um, you know, she she really made good with the Mandalorians to the point where Armor trusted her and thought that she would be the one to unite them all. If this is part of the plan, there you go. Axe Wolves disappearing in season two. Maybe that had to do with, you know, making a deal with the devil, which is the Empire. Maybe that's what happened there. I, look, we're going to find out in less than a week. That's just something I that was on my mind and I wanted to bring it up. Let me know, know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. It really means a lot to me. Comment below. Bo-Katan, innocent. Bo-Katan, guilty. May the force of others be with you.